My fellow citizens, let me start by expressing my heartfelt, my heartfelt condolences to the families that have lost their loved ones this last few weeks. I feel your pain and I know it will take time before meaningful healing comes. Those nursing injuries from the brute of Ruto's forces in hospital beds and at home, I wish you quick recovery. May God console you. Kenyans, it is now exactly one month since the young people of Kenya came out in large numbers to assemble, demonstrate, picket, and petition their representatives to reject the finance bill 2024. The Gen Zs and millennials and Kenyans of goodwill, some young in body and some young at heart, stood together to say no to an oppressive tax regime. They also spoke... So I start again. Okay, let me, let me just start in one minute. Thank you, thank you. My fellow citizens, let me start by expressing my heartfelt condolences to the families that have, have lost their loved ones these last few weeks. I feel your pain, and I know it will take time before meaningful healing comes. To those nursing injuries from the brute or brutal forces, in hospital beds and at home, I wish you quick recovery. May God console you. Kenyans, it is now exactly one month since the young people of Kenya came out in large numbers to assemble, demonstrate, picket, and petition their representatives to reject the finance bill 2024. The Gen Zs and millennials and Kenyans of goodwill, some young in body and some young at heart together, stood together to say no to an oppressive tax regime. They also spoke unequivocally that they want a reformed government. Young people in Kenya are concerned about, one, poor agriculture production, weak threatens our food adequacy, safety, and security. Two, parents, teachers, and learners alike are all confused by the CBC syllabus and transition. College and university education has been made too expensive and young Kenyans are not joining while others are dropping from colleges. Three, our healthcare is now completely broken with NHIF looted and left incapable of meeting claims by hospitals, some of which have now been forced to close down. Our infrastructure is crumbling, roads are not maintained, our ports are being auctioned, and basic access to water and electricity is out of reach to many Kenyans. The business environment has been destroyed by bad government policy in sector after sector. Foreign direct investment has gone down, and we have seen investors running away to neighboring countries, leaving Kenyans jobless. The unemployment rate has, skyro uh, has skyrocketed, the cost of living has gone beyond the roof, and many Kenyans cannot afford a decent living. To make matters worse, a burdensome tax regime is squeezing every blood out of Kenyans, killing their businesses and making their products less competitive. Sensing individual and collective failure, the young people came out to demand that their president confront these challenges. Instead, what did the president do? For one, he used goons and criminals to infiltrate peaceful demonstrations to get reasons to unleash violence against Kenyans. He used the police to unleash terror on young people. 
resorted to abductions, forced disappearance, torture, killings, and mutilation of bodies of the Kenyan children. The president would win us by withdrawing the finance bill, but continued to implement its draconian provisions. He deceitfully dissolved his cabinet on grounds of incompetence, only to reappoint the same crooks. He completely refused to listen to the issues raised by Kenyans, and instead he raided the opposition to appoint cabinet secretaries in a bid to weaken oversight against his government and to gain cosmetic stability to consider the next general election and to ignore this and the next generation. No Gen Zs were nominated in, in this cabinet, no gender rule considered, thereby discriminating on women, persons with disabilities were not considered, the only disabilities which were considered were mental disabilities, which were considered in the current cabinet. Fellow Kenyans, these last few weeks I have been to the mucharis in this country helping desperate parents, siblings and relatives, neighbors and friends identify the bodies of their loved ones brutally murdered and bodies dumped in quarries or wrongly registered to conceal murder by the state. I have stood by parents and communities burying young Kenyans killed by President Ruto and his rogue policemen following insane commands of people we put in office to secure our lives. As I speak today, so many parents and relatives are still distressed and emotionally broken as they try to search for their young children abducted by this dangerous regime. President Ruto has turned Kenyans against each other. Now he's trying to isolate some tribes and some ages and some regions to divide us some more. I want to say categorically that President Ruto is the real problem in this country. He is the real problem that this country is facing. He is the stumbling block to the modest reforms Gen Z's are asking for. Sharing power in a cosmetic overhaul, we demand from Ruto these bare minimums. Pay to the families who've lost their loved ones, 1 million Kenya shillings for funeral expenses they are incurring. Number two, compensate the bereaved families at 10 million Kenya shillings each for the excruciating pain, agony, and suffering you have put them through. Declare a mourning day and hold a national funeral service mass in honor of the patriots you have killed. Pay all the medical expenses for the young people who have been brutalized by the police upon your instructions. Release all the young Kenyans that you abducted and continue to hold in communicado. Release them today. Drop all the trumped up charges you have pressed against innocent Kenyans who were arrested while calling for good governance of their country. Mr. President, you don't seem to get it. Young Kenyans are mad and angry and stressed and they can't believe we just can't get a single thing right out of their modest demands. Kenyans want, number one, a competent government capable of getting things done. They want government positions to be well thought out well-structured and staffed with public-minded based on meritocracy, not kakistocracy, qualified citizens committed who are committed to a common good. 
want you to address the rampant lo looting of public resources. We want you to stop interfering in the running of state departments, give the bureaucracy space to do what they should do. You don't know it all, and you cannot do it all. But as we ask you to do this, just know that the young people of this country are not afraid of you. We don't fear you. We expect you to serve us. Remember, the most important office in a democracy is the citizen. We, the people, can choose to exercise our sovereign power directly. May God bless you. May God remember our country, Kenya. Thank you and God bless you. Any question, omission, omission? We said clearly that those who have been injured, the medical bills should be taken care of by the government and also should be compensated because of the infringement of their right to demonstrate. And if we can't do that, there's a process, a judicial process that is going to take place to file for a constitutional petition. And number one, the orders we shall seek is declaration of violation of human rights. There shall be, uh, 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 we, we shall seek compensation. There shall be damages that we shall want. And that cost of mitigation shall be borne by the respondent, that is the state. Uh, now, I'm here as Honorable Doctor, Doctor Babu Oweno. ODM has a spokesperson that can speak on behalf of the party, and that is the party Secretary General. I'm speaking on behalf of Kenyans. Kenyans who are agonizing because Ruto in is antagonizing instead of organizing this country and therefore he should be disorganized by Kenyans. So on matters ODM, those who accepted these positions, Gen Z's cannot come out to fight for you. And then you you behave like hyenas. Gen Z's died. People died, other Kenyans died because of this. You are not party to it. Why should you accept these positions? That is a show of greed. And that should never be tolerated. That is a decision I'm giving as Babu Owino, not as ODM. Although I'm in ODM. They are saying, the agency are saying, it's high time. The Gen Z's are saying that uh, we Gen Z's have said that. <laughs> 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 they are saying approaching you as the new opposition. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, from today henceforth, I'm the chief opposition leader because there are so many jobs doing rounds. There are so many people who are in the opposition who are now in bed with the government. My interest is to fight for Kenyans. It pains me, it pains me to see a person who was a fellow member of parliament joining government. And it pains me to look back in Soweto slums, Kibra slums, to look back in central region, Nyanza coast and everywhere else, to see that child who has been sent away because he lacks only 5,000 to pay for the schooling in a secondary school. Sent because of 5,000. I'm so pained to see that child who's stuck in hospital cannot be treated because they lack money. Even money for x-ray that is around only 2,500. If you can't afford it, then you can't even be x-rayed. I'm so pained to see our young men and women moving around without jobs seeing about a border rider in the sun from morning to evening, 
only gaining 50 shillings to 100 shillings in a day. Seeing a mama boga, selling boga, selling omena, only to get 50 Kenya shillings. 50 to 100. How will this parent collect this money to reach 300,000 Kenya shillings that Tuto wants in a university? So pain to see our children, our students, who finished high school, are waiting to join university, cannot join because they can't afford it. Some people are dropping out because they can't afford it. Yet, we are encouraging patrimonialism, we are encouraging corruption, we are encouraging favoritism, we are encouraging mediocrity, we are encouraging kakistocracy. What are we doing as a nation? Mr. President, you find on grounds that you are selling eggs and on the grounds that you are selling chicken, you should know better what a hustler feels. It is because of education that made you live in state house today. Why it not for education, you would have never come to Nairobi. The same education you are denying to our children, to our brothers and sisters. You've forgotten the hustlers. You are no longer the hustler who used to preach the hustler narrative. What happened to you? Instead of just giving direct orders, instead of just employing people who are merit-based, who are capable of delivering services, because you have the resources, you borrowed enough money, we've never seen any single project done, completed, from the time you got in. What is happening with you? Instead, you're turning your back against you're turning your back on your people. You, there can never be a government without a population that you are killing now. And this was a decision that was made during the Montevideo conference that the characteristics of a state, number one, there must be a definite population. Why are you killing the population? What will you have to govern? Do you think the new face of uh, cabinet the new face of cabinet does not meet any demand, not of the Gen Z's, not obeying even the two third gender rule as enshrined in the constitution, as envisaged in the constitution. It goes against the tenets of the apex of the law clearly. And I told you, even persons with disabilities are not considered the only disability that president has considered his mental disabilities that he has decided to nominate in the cabinet. We want other persons with disabilities to be considered within the cabinet. Mashmua and Dr. Dr. President Ruto sends Patricia to give you the remaining question. One of the questions I you. I cannot accept any position from President Ruto. No, thank you. And that is a fruit from a poisoned tree. The fruit is poisonous and harmful and dangerous. In terms of oversight, you have you put a screen in place to take over the park chair. Now the park chair in the treasury is safe to become a very parliament approved. So I also came to take over specifically that position for oversight. Going by the doctrine of separation of powers, checks and balances, as was opined by Charles Louis, the second act, the Montesquieu, the Baron, that our work is to provide office oversight roles. I wanted to be the park chairman then. Now I'm overqualified to be a park chairman. <laughs> <laughs> I say no, thank you. <laughs> I'm clearly saying that that is not the interest of the people. It is not what the people wanted. These people were never seen anywhere, not even protecting the interest of the Gen Z. Why should they rush to take these positions? These positions, let it, let Ruto as a person appoint his people. This is his government. We want competent people. We don't want him to invade opposition, but the work of opposition is to provide checks and balances, is to ensure that the government delivers that which
they promised unto the people. Please, please, please pump me with more questions and read my answers. <laughs> <laughs> Sufficiently answered? Yes. Thank you very much and God bless you all. No, <laughs> <laughs>